I am rarely surprised by games anymore. And I don't mean that in a bad way. What I'm saying is that I play a lot of different games in a lot of different genres, and I go into a game knowing what to expect. Well, I picked up Papers, Please quite a few years ago, and then it sat on my shelf. And I'll tell you, if it's sitting on your shelf right now, wasting away in your backlog, it's time to pick it up because Papers, Please is a phenomenal game, and we're going to talk about it right now. Papers, Please is a puzzle simulation video game created by indie game developer Lucas Pope, who formerly worked for Naughty Dog on a very popular series you may have heard of before, Uncharted, before leaving in 2010 to develop and publish through his own production company, 3909 LLC. The game was originally released on August 8th, 2013 for Microsoft Windows and OS X and later ported to the PlayStation Vita on December 12th, 2017. Papers, Please begins in the year 1982 in the fictional Eastern Bloc-like country of Aristotska after ending a six-year-long war with the neighboring country of Kalechia. The game starts with the player's character winning the labor lottery and being assigned the job of an immigration inspector at the Greston border checkpoint. The player's task is to control the flow of people entering Aristotska. This involves checking each immigrant's documents and using a variety of tools to inspect their paperwork for any discrepancies. The player must then decide whether to approve or deny the immigrant's entry into the country. The game's rules and conditions for entry become progressively more complex as the game progresses, with the player having to juggle the moral implications of their decisions, the well-being of their family, and the ever-present scrutiny of the Aristotskin government. At a runtime of 5 hours for the main objective and 16 hours for the player that strives to see all aspects of the game, there are a few things you should know before diving into Papers, Please that will improve your overall experience and success with the game. Foremost, the game does not replace your old saves when starting a new one. Instead, it creates a new branch allowing you to continue your game from any day and your game will branch away from your previous playthrough. This unique feature allows players to explore different choices and outcomes without losing their progress. Speaking of losing progress, the game can also end abruptly and without warning in several ways. Negative money balance, family members die, unauthorized booth decorations, shooting random people or guards, caught by Ezek, escape, or instant death. Remember, your actions and decisions in the game have consequences and can lead to an abrupt ending at any time. With so many obstacles to success standing in your way, remember the adage, practice makes perfect, or at the very least, progress. The game is all about checking over documents as quickly as possible. Just practicing will help a great deal to start with. Here are a few other helpful suggestions I have found online and implemented in my playthrough. Use a note sheet. Print out a note sheet and put it next to you as you play. It'll be your quickest reference. Check expiration dates first. This is one of the fastest things to check. Plus, expired documents allow you to reject an immigrant immediately without highlighting the discrepancy or interrogating them. Verify all required documentation. Make sure all the required documentation is there. Sometimes an immigrant does have the missing document, but will only present it after you question them. Check gender, height, and weight. These are easy to miss as they are only denoted as a single letter or number. Read your daily bulletin. The rules change a lot over the course of the game. Reading your bulletin at the start of your day doesn't waste any time. Ignore Ezek requests. Burn that bribe money. Your boss will find it. Do what your supervisor tells you. This should be a given, but at some point he will specifically ask you to let in a woman. Do it. Remember, the more people you inspect before 6 p.m., the more money you get. And like in real life, money keeps you alive. And I'd be remiss if I didn't give you some tips to save money because, again, it's scarce. Alternate between food and heat. You don't need to provide both food and heat for your family every day. You can alternate between them to save money. Process more immigrants. The more immigrants you process, the more money you make. So try to work as quickly and accurately as possible. Avoid penalties. Making mistakes can lead to penalties, which will reduce your earnings. Always double check all documents to avoid any errors. You can have two penalties per day without incurring a reduction in your earnings, though. No one is perfect, even Aristotskins. 
Don't upgrade your booth or apartment unnecessarily. While booth upgrades can make your job easier, they also cost money. Only purchase upgrades that you really need. The same can be said for your accommodations. While a better apartment sounds like a good thing, it won't be so for your wallet, and depending on the decisions you've made thus far in the game, can be considered a risky one. Manage your expenses. Be mindful of your expenses. For example, you don't always need to buy medicine for sick family members. Sometimes they can recover on their own. Adopt your niece. Another mouth is another burden, but she does bring a nice dowry with her that offsets those costs. And when in doubt, a quick way to make a few bucks is to use easy mode. This mode gives you an extra 20 credits at the end of each day, making it easier to manage your expenses. By now we're pretty deep into the review. Basically all you've learned is that Papers, Please is a game that punishes your mistakes constantly leaving you broke and desperate in a post-war landscape. What's the fun in that? Well, Papers, Please is not without its levity and humor. Let me explain. While the game's humor is often subtle and dark, it is masterfully done. For instance, you might encounter a man who repeatedly tries to cross the border with hilariously forged documents, or a couple where the husband has all the correct papers, but the wife does not. Lucas Pope, the creator of the game, has also included some humorous Easter eggs and scenarios that players can discover. These add a layer of levity to the otherwise serious and often grim circumstances of the game. Okay, great, a little humor. I'm winning you back. But now I hear you murmuring 16 hours potentially of just checking paperwork? Really? Why would I want to do that? Just like any other puzzle game that builds in challenge, this one will keep you coming back right till day 31. The game's core mechanics revolve around the player's ability to scrutinize the paperwork of each immigrant, cross-referencing information and checking for discrepancies. The challenge lies in the ever-growing list of rules and the increased complexity of the documents presented by the immigrants. The player must also manage their personal finances, make complex decisions that can impact their in-game family. It's more than just a puzzle game. It's a game of decision and morality, organization and time management with 20 possible endings. I personally had four before getting my fifth and final best ending. And while sometimes it required backtracking to choose a branch before I took a bribe or had an unauthorized wall hanging, I was never tempted to quit or stop. Knowing a true ending await it was enough to keep me going. As I mentioned at the top of this review, there are a few ways to play this game. I chose to play it on PS Vita. At a price of $125 Canadian CIB, or for my friend south of the border, $92, I would say Papers, Please is worthy of the price it commands. But if you want the experience without the sticker shock, it's available via Steam for $12.99 Canadian or under $10 USD. You can also download this short film for free, which I've used through this video and credit the creator for in the description. Since I'm a huge supporter of physical media, I enjoyed my time with it handheld. But along with the pros of that, it also came with some cons. I will list both of those for you now so you can make an informed decision. Portability. The PS Vita version of Papers, Please is the most portable version yet, allowing players to inspect documents and stamp approvals or denials in the palms of their hand. Tactile experience. The PS Vita's touchscreen is utilized to shuffle around reference books, passports, and various other pieces of ephemera, making for a surprisingly tactile experience. Content. Despite its smaller size, the PS Vita version includes all the features of the desktop and tablet version. This includes all 31 days of single player story mode with branching narratives, 20 endings, and an endless mode with online leaderboards, at least for now. Unlike many indie titles, Papers, Please had a physical release on the Vita demonstrating its popularity and the loyalty of its fan base, but that didn't mean the journey was an easy one. It was a three year arduous endeavor that despite the game's pixel art style, it was originally designed to be played on a big screen. The challenge in porting it to the PS Vita was fitting everything onto the smaller screen without sacrificing the core document shuffling mechanics. The solution, was to increase the desk size slightly, float the booth over the border view only when needed, and add vertical scrolling to shift between the booth, checkpoint, and the desk. The analog sticks and directional buttons on the PS Vita can be used to quickly scroll up and down. This is pretty much the only con in the game, but can be a bigger one to overcome as more paperwork means more shuffling, as the time runs down on each day. 
Personally, I didn't struggle too much and it made the game more challenging, which made winning, if you can call it that, much more rewarding. In the end, it paid off as Papers, Please has won countless awards and was ranked one of the top games of 2013, selling more than 1.8 million copies by 2016. By its 10th anniversary, Papers, Please has sold more than 5 million copies and is one of only 36 video games in the Museum of Modern Art's permanent collection, alongside Tetris, Street Fighter 2, and Portal. Papers, Please is a unique game that has carved out its own niche in the indie game genre. It's often compared to other games that offer similar themes or gameplay mechanics. If you liked Papers, Please, you might want to check these ones out too. Not Tonight. In Not Tonight, you're a newly made bouncer for nightclubs in the United Kingdom. Your goal is to keep a stable job and stay out of trouble so that you can become a UK citizen. This game is more of an RPG simulation game with an interesting inventory system layout. Do not feed the monkeys. In this game, you're basically a stalker. Hack into other people's computers and videos and spy on them. Do Not Feed the Monkeys is a story-rich, choices-matter game where you learn about different couples and strangers online and make impactful decisions. Or if you're just a fan of Pope's work and want to support his most recent endeavors, you can check out Return of the Obra Dinn, an adventure logic puzzle game where you play an unknown detective trying to solve the mysteries of a once-lost, now reappearing merchant ship. In conclusion, Papers, Please on PS Vita is not just a game, but a thought-provoking exploration of morality, empathy, and the human condition, all wrapped up in the mundane task of document inspection. If you're looking for your next great indie game playthrough, I'd highly suggest giving this one a try. Until next time, glory to Aristotska! Sakalichi.